All right, thank you. And hello, my name is Lukas Werling, and I'm going to present to you Winter Automatic Non-Volatile Memory Crash Consistency Testing for Full Systems. This is joint work with my student Samuel Kalbfleisch and my advisor Frank Belosa. To start, I want to assert that crash consistency is a hard problem. The system may crash at any point during its execution, for example, due to a power failure, and the goal of any software running on the system that holds state is then, after restart, to recover a semantically correct state that is, of course, as close as possible to the state before the system crash. This is a general problem that got new attention with the introduction of non-volatile memory. Non-volatile memory is part of the memory hierarchy, as shown here on the right. And in contrast to the previous secondary storage, it is not accessed uh, blockwise, uh, but directly with read and write store instructions um, that also go through the normal memory hierarchy, including uh, registers and caches. Of course, the caches are still volatile, uh, so the developers need to introduce cache flushes as well as memory fences to ensure that any data uh, reaches the non-volatile memory in the correct order. All of these cache flushes and memory fences do not actually have an effect on normal execution, and any bugs would only show if the system actually crashes and after restart it holds the wrong state. Uh, so this means that we need special tools to test crash consistency since we cannot see it otherwise. So when we are, test when we are writing an NVM file system of our own, um, we looked at the available tools for crash consistency testing for non-volatile memory. And we found that none of them are really easily adaptable for testing file systems that run in a kernel setting. Uh, we identified three main reasons for that. Um, the first reason, is that a lot of the tools rely on manual annotation of sites where you do memory fences and uh, cache flushes. But these are hard to introduce in a, in a kernel setting where you often only control your own kernel module with the file system, uh, but still need to interact with the rest of the kernel. Second, uh, symbolic execution and related techniques are great for understanding what the code is doing, but we found it hard to apply to kernel code since most of it is written for user space code setting. And we found, especially for file systems, that the interaction between, um, between user space code and kernel space code is, is important for crash consistency. Finally, some of these tools rely on heuristics to detect bugs, uh, such as what is happening when the program ends. This is, of course, limited to certain types of bugs, and these works generally were written with uh, user space software in mind and not with kernel file systems. So we set out to write our own tool called Winter that captures the full system in a virtual machine and also features automatic testing for crash consistency properties such as atomicity. We also contribute the first analysis of uh, three file systems written for non-volatile memory, which are Nova, Nova Fortis, and PMFS, which are all um, previous research projects. I now want to start looking into Winter by giving an overview of all its components. There are three main components, uh, the tracer, the crash image generator, and the tester. The tracer gets as input a virtual machine image with the software that we want to test, and in that virtual machine, it runs a certain test case. And while the test case runs, it traces all interaction with non-volatile memory, including all memory writes, um, cache flushes, and memory fences. Once tracing has finished, we have a trace file, which is the input for the crash image generator. The crash image generator replaces the trace uh, step by step and reproduces the non-volatile memory as well as cache contents. So with non-volatile memory contents, we always mean everything that is fully persisted at that point in the trace because it has already been flushed out of the caches. And cache contents are everything that might be lost uh, if the system crashes at that point. 
So in this example, we have three blue writes, and these, of course, would first be in the volatile caches and might be lost. From these contents, the crash image generator generates crash images, of course, uh, which are possible NVM contents if the program crashes at that point uh, during the program execution. Of course, there's this issue that if there are a lot of writes, uh, then this might lead to state explosion, and we might try to generate way too many writes uh, that we cannot handle anymore. So we employ a heuristic to cut down on that, more on that later. Just to illustrate how this would continue here, um, for the next part of the trace, we had a memory flush of these. So now all the previous cache contents are now fully persisted. And at the next step, only the new writes would be considered for crash image generation. The final component, the tester, extracts the semantic states from each of these crash images so that we understand what is happening. And it can automatically derive certain crash consistency properties or detect crash consistency properties, such as atomicity. I now want to talk about each of these components in a, with a bit more detail, starting with the tracer. We built the tracer on the Panda full system emulator, uh, which uses binary translation. And as part of the translation, it can hook arbitrary instructions, which we use to trace memory accesses, as well as all instructions that perform cache flushes and memory fences. We also implement hypercalls uh, to signal where a test case starts and ends uh, within the trace, so that we can specifically look into that part of the trace for detecting bugs. To aid the developer in understanding why bugs are happening, uh, we also associate metadata with each trace entry, including a stack trace of the virtual machine execution at the point where the trace entry was generated. The output of the tracer is a single sequential trace file. In summary, the tracer works with arbitrary unmodified software, including kernel software that runs in the virtual machine. The crash image generator takes this trace file as an input and uses it to, uh, to derive NVM and cache contents during the memory trace. And at each fence, it generates crash images as described before. Uh, this includes the happy path image where every write is persisted and no data is lost. But of course, we also have to look at subsets of writes. And specifically for the file systems uh, we looked into, um, we soon encountered the problem that in some cases, there are way too many modified cache lines at some, at some fences. Uh, so it's, for example, in Nova, we observed up to 512 modified cache lines for the simple file uh, system operations that we tested. And this immediately leads to state explosion. And it is not viable to generate all possible crash images here. However, we observed that all the file system, and I assume most NVM software in general, uses journaling and other techniques such as log structuring to actually write any important data. And this generally happens in two steps. The first step is to write a journal entry out to memory. And this can be, of course, arbitrarily large. But only after it is fully flushed out and there has been a memory fence, it is marked valid in the second step, which is usually just a very small write that sets a single bit to valid. And in case of a crash, the recovery process will always ignore incomplete journal entries and thus will not read them at all. So it is not useful to generate crash images for incomplete journal in, uh, entries. But how can we detect these uh, incomplete journal entries? Um, and the idea that we have following here is to trace reads to the non-volatile memory during the recovery process. Um, so the way we are doing this, this is that we take the NVM contents at the memory fence and combine it to one single uh, image, as shown here, like the happy path image, basically, with all the uh, unpersisted write uh, included. 
we load that into a virtual machine and run the recovery code. So this would usually um, be a file system checker, um, but for the NVM file systems, we just have to mount the file system. From the traced reads, um, we then know which parts of the image has, have been read and which haven't been. And we can then compare this again to the um, volatile reads that we started with to obtain the set of lines that we actually use for generating crash images. So in this case, since this was an incomplete journal entry, we would not read, or the recovery would not read any of it, and the crash image generator then would completely uh, skip on generating any crash images for this case. So in summary, with a heuristic, we have achieved efficient generation of the interesting crash images um, for detecting bugs. But of course, the crash images themselves are not very useful for that, since they're just a bunch of binary data uh, for which we don't have any further insight. So in the final stage, the tester, we extract the semantic states from the crash images by again loading them into a virtual machine and running a state extraction program, um, which in the case of file systems is just a serialized file listing that we then save to a file. We can then find all the unique states here, which is already very useful for manual analysis of the states. Since we now can have a look, so in this example, we have four crash images and would get three states. And now the developer can look into these states and can see whether the second intermediate state uh, that might happen during a crash is an expected one or whether this is already a bug. But we can also use this data to derive some crash consistency properties automatically. The first one uh, that we found very useful, uh, we call it single final state. And the idea here is that for any multi-step process, one property that we still always expect is that at the final memory fence of the operation, so where the operation ends, we expect that only one semantic state is still possible because otherwise, uh, there would be still some unpersisted data left in the caches, um, which is obviously a bug. We can also test automatically test for atomicity by looking at the number of unique states that are generated. And if there are only two possible states uh, from any number of crash images that are generated, then we can say that the operation is atomic. So how do we apply Winter now to test file systems? We created three virtual machines uh, that included kernels with Nova, Nova Fortis, and PMFS. And we wrote a state extraction program that we called FSDump that serializes the visual file system state, including all metadata of files and their contents to a JSON file. We wrote 16 test cases, which are all short shell scripts uh, that were chosen to cover most basic file system operations. The results of our tests are shown in this table. Um, it is easy to see that we found several bugs across all three file systems that we tested that ranged from data loss to crashes, atomicity violations. We had cases where reading and writing the file system, even if it's only unrelated files, failed after recovery and also violations of our single final state property. In this presentation, I want to get into more detail of one particular bug um, of a missing flush in Nova. The other bugs are discussed in more detail in the paper. So the right test case um, where we found this missing flush bug um, looked as given above. Um, so it first creates a file called my file and then writes hello world to it. And the winter report for this uh, is that there are seven states. This is okay at first because this is not an atomic operation. We have multiple steps here. However, it also reported that there are four possible final states. And looking into these states, we could see 
that there's first the expected state, hello world with a new line at the end, but also three additional states where a suffix of the file is missing and is replaced with only zero bytes. To understand what is happening there, we now looked into the trace file, specifically filtering for the cache line uh, where this file content uh, is written to. And what we could see then is that Nova wrote to this file in four distinct instructions. First, a non-temporal write that uh, does not go into the volatile caches um, of the first eight bytes of the files, and then the remaining three bytes with individual single byte writes that do go to the caches. And of course, there's no flush here, so the remaining three bytes might, all, yeah, might remain in the caches and will be lost uh, on a crash. And to get a better understanding of where this bug is happening or how to fix this bug, we can then look into the metadata associated with these writes and can then see the stack trace. And the root cause of this bug is then that uh, the Nova function calls a general Linux helper function called copy user no cache that apparently wasn't written with non-volatile memory but with performance in mind and the developers deemed it acceptable to leave a small amount of data in the caches, which is of course not acceptable uh, when using it for uh, non-volatile memory and for persistency. Apart from finding new bugs, we also looked into whether Winter can reproduce previously reported and fixed bugs. And to do that, uh, we uh, looked at the Nova bug tracker and looked specifically for crash consistency bugs and verified that um, if we check out versions of the code without the bug fix, that Winter reports additional issues with the test cases that we are using. We also wanted to get some better understanding of how effective the heuristic is that we have chosen. And we found that with the heuristic, Winter generates significantly fewer crash images than with it, but it still finds the same semantic states as in a run without the heuristic. Finally, we looked at the performance and found that every te test case takes only a few minutes to run and parallel analysis is possible. So it's very possible for the de uh, developer to use Winter to do live analysis and debugging of a file system. Details for all of these points are in the paper. To conclude, I want to repeat the assertion from the start that crash consistency is a hard problem since bugs do not show during normal execution and we need special tools to test for it. Winter is one such tool that captures the full system in a virtual machine and also features automatic testing for properties such as atomicity and single final state. We analyzed the file systems Nova, Nova Fortis, and PMFS and found several new bugs. We successfully participated in the artifact evaluation and our source code is available on GitHub. So check it out if you're working on NVM file systems yourself. Thank you.